Okay, the next part here I'm going to talk about is my big picture concept of financial energy. So I'm going to read through some of these slides here real quick. Financial energy mentioned is mentioned by many people, but they seem to be referring to physical energy needed to make the product. For example, the diesel used in trucks to dig gold out of the ground. Uh, my big picture concept here is to look at the math of the effort going into the final product rather than the physical energy used to create it. Processes and trade secrets are an element of creating a finished product not captured in oil usage and very important in the concept of, of efficiencies in reducing physical energy needed to create a good, good or service. So over the course of time, many of you notice that it, it, it takes a lot less money over the course of time to create commodities. You get better ways of, of uh, making, uh, making lumber, uh, digging out gold out of the ground. You get better equipment. Uh, it becomes more efficient. It costs less money. Uh, the, and also the physical energy required then potentially is less. So what I'm trying to do with this is understand the level of effort needed to go into creating a good or service. And that is what I'm defining as financial energy. I have some pretty good, uh, I have a pretty good, um, example of this below. So I'm going to start off here and talk a little bit about physical energy and then compare that to financial energy. And what I'm defining here is physical energy. Um, if you just look up at energy on Wikipedia, in physics and chemistry, the law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. It is said to be conserved over time. This law, first proposed and tested by Emile de Ch 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 Chatelet, <laughs> means that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, rather it can only be transformed or transferred from one form to another. So, you know, you're thinking about radioactive energy, there's decay there. If you light wood on fire, there's chemical reactions and, and smoke is created. So you just see a pile of ashes there, but it's transferred into other means. So the conservation of energy there is a concept I'm also going to take over to financial energy. So physical energy is what you think of to make rocks move. Uh, there's probably about 10 different types of energy that I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to go too far into it. I'm looking at big picture here. If any of you have ever seen the, the commercial in the United States about a gym, it's like picking thing, pick things up and put them down. Um, if you're going to try to dig gold out of the ground, you have to move lots of rocks. You have to move lots of dirt. So, the physical energy in the sense of mining gold is 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 ex making dynamite explode rock and then lifting the rock out and then and then using chemical process to extract the gold it's there's a lot of physical energy required with that but financial energy is how you make processes move so you think of financial energy here in terms of physics where the financial energy is neither created nor destroyed it nearly changes form so if you lose money in the stock market, it didn't just disappear <laughs> into money heaven, as Rick calls it, as Rick Rule calls it. It 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 was transferred to someone else. The 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 financial energy went to another location. So with physical energy, I'm going to go th through a couple concepts here so we can just uh, make sure that we're uh, clearly defining physical versus financial energy. So Steve San Angelo talked about where you're digging rocks out of the, you're digging gold out of the ground and you're actually storing energy into the gold. He keeps talking about uh, the oil and the energy cliff and the energy used to create the gold. He's talking about the physical energy and trying to extract it out of the earth. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I want to build on this definition and, and realize that it takes financial energy in order to hire labor to drive the trucks. It requires processes that are devised by, you know, MIT engineers in order to then extract the gold out of the rock. So the physical energy here is just one component. Um, I don't think it's a very effective way of describing how you're storing value in gold or Bitcoin or whatnot. So in some examples of, of physical energy here. Um, the definition here I, I looked up and said is that related to interfere on raw physical matter, masses and bodies, and its activities potentially and generally realized realizing work. 
So potentially you're you're lifting up rocks and putting them down somewhere else. Um, some examples here, you got the general waves, radio waves, microwaves, sound waves, ocean waves, x-rays, sunlight, infrared, UVs, etc. Kinetic energy, potential energy, gravitational energy, uh, compressed or stretched spring or gases, uh, magnets and, and magnet coil interaction, electrostatic and electrical forces. So there's a lot of different kinds of physical energy. Um, for argument's sake here, I'm just thinking of it um, as, as it's not very efficient to use this to calculate what you're putting into gold. However, with financial energy, where physical energy moves mass, financial energy moves processes. Financial energy can neither be neither created nor destroyed. It changes state. It changes ownership. We'll we'll see we'll see more about that later. Uh, financial energy is viewed as wealth and money to many, but this is incomplete. And there's there are a lot of aspects of energy to utilize within this definition. So if you have if you're a human being and you have excess physical energy, you you have you're overweight. However, if you have excess financial energy, you're rich. So that's, that's how we're looking at excess financial energy here. Financial energy is what makes the economy move. Return on investment is the determining factor to engage. If ROI is not a desired outcome projected, the project is not done. So one of the aspects of my background in my career, I have something called a PMP, uh, Project Management Professional, and there's a lot of inputs and processes and, and, and what, you, what you understand is that projects are done at the very beginning you're, you're trying to scope out what your return on investment is going to be and if you don't hit certain numbers then you don't do it so you don't dig gold out of the ground because it's a hobby you dig it out of the ground because you're you're using effort you're using um uh, you're using uh time you're using energy you're using knowledge you're using skills you're using tech uh, process all this type of stuff you're trying to extract something, a finished product that gets more value than you put into it or else you don't do it, period. And that's, that's a microcosm for our entire economy. So why introduce financial energy? Why? Why do I even bother with this? Um, this is the energy that moves the economy. And it's important to understand that trying to counterfeit this dysregulates the system. This is going to play further into uh, the other parts of this, but um, when you introduce fiat currency that is not backed by anything, it creates dysregulation. Think of what uh, right now, uh, if someone has cancer, it's it's rapid and uncontrolled growth uh, of cells. Um, I, I'm not a doctor, so please don't kill me on that one, but cancer has a lot of uh, excess energy in your system, whether it's too much sugar, too much fat, whatever it is that you're doing, too much sunlight, smoking, um, all kinds of problems you can run into with things that create cancer. It's, it's artificial things that are hitting your body and your body deals with it by creating cancer. So if you're introducing things into your financial ecosystems, which don't belong there, there's a lot of things that come out of that that are not desired results. So being able to measure these forces, forces can show you the true GDP. Uh, right now, when you have government push, uh, pushing fake money into the system, it jukes the GDP. Or economic, economic opportunities exist that allow for conditions to unlock financial energy. So if you're a businessman or entrepreneur and you're looking at whether or not you want to build an apartment complex to house a thousand people, you're going to look at the numbers. And if those numbers are not conducive to you making money, you're not going to do it. And what I would, I would suggest here is that if we understood the financial energy of everything, all we're doing in, in a GDP scenario that's not juked by artificial money is what we want to do is create scenarios that create very good ROIs, whether it's uh, whether it's, it's, it's promotions in order to move your business to a different jurisdiction and then you can have more money back or whether it's less taxes or less regulation. You want to create a situation, you want to create opportunity for people to make money. 
Now, what's going on right now with all of the, the stimulus checks and the, uh, the continued pumping of money into the economy is they're telling us, wow, we got 6% GDP or whatever the number is. Well, you take away all the stimulus and what does that GDP look like? So what we want to do is create conditions where people can then um, use their, their unique knowledge and, and use their ability to source raw materials to create finished goods that actually make money for them. Um, what you also could do with this concept is you could create a metrics dashboard uh, uh, of, of sorts where you could gauge relative values of everything. Uh, you can show subsystems where things are overbought and things were, or are oversold relative to gold. Um, it would create opportunities for you to, to do a lot of arbitrage um, if you were tracking everything relative to gold. Additionally, uh, the mathematical ROIs could exist to potentially advertise economic opportunities, thus making investment more efficient and making the economy move on opportunity, not false energy. So if you were able to advertise um, your ability to uh, you know, have lower regulations in, in a certain area, lower taxes in an area, it makes it more friendly to business. And you just don't create a jewelry store in the downtown of a, of a crime ridden city uh, because well rule of law is very big and you you have a lot of downside risk to that and I'll, I'll get into more of that later as well with financial energy some of my thoughts here uh, financial energy in motion affects the ability to perform work I refer to this as jewels of energy at any project or task you want to do you need to unlock financial energy to do it. A building will need joules of energy to complete. In project management, there is a cost to this in dollars. Now with financial energy, I kind of came up with a, a spin on the, the, the physical energy definition. Is that effort related to initiating and sustaining a process of making work to include technology, processes, and people? And here's another example where you're thinking of physical energy, you're just gonna be moving rocks around where financial energy moves processes. And part of that could be digging gold out of the ground. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna unlock some financial energy for money to put into a business. And this starts the work and it starts the processes and it, you get the, the people hired and the technologies uh, in order to produce the good. Uh, this can move the physical energy as part of a process using financial energy. For example, to pay someone to lift the rock. The output can be stored and locked back up in financial batteries of asset classes. And I'm gonna talk about the asset classes in the second part of this. This can be a positive or a negative ROI. Risk assessment prior can increase probability of high ROI. So one of the, the concepts here is return on investment, obviously. Now, if you project out with your best people and your best processes that you're gonna get a 10% ROI and you start doing this kind of stuff, and you run into all kinds of counterparty risk where maybe there's a strike at a mine and your costs skyrocket, you now have negative risk, you have risk there and, and you can have a 10% loss instead of a 10% gain. So risk assessment at the time of creating your ROI is a very, very, very fundamental thing that you need to understand. So here's the fun little uh, graphic I came up with. How do you unlock financial energy and what do you do with it? So this is a, a business here. Um, business here is going to be creating jewelry. And this business has stored 100 jewels. And they're going to they're gonna open up their bank account. They're, they're going to crack the piggy bank. They're going to unlock some of these jewels. And with this, they're going to they're gonna say, hey, how do I make this jewelry? Let's, let's look up our process on how we do it. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be buying, uh, we're going to be buying raw materials from someone, let's, let's get some gold bricks. We're gonna buy the gold bricks with our jewels. We're gonna hire some labor because we need to have all kinds of people that are specialists in different things to do. And now we're also gonna use some of these jewels. We're gonna, we're gonna use some of these jewels to buy a plant or we're gonna, we're gonna rent some space in an existing plant. And the output here is we're gonna have a good or service. Here we're gonna be making some, some gold uh, jewelry. And this process captures the productivity of the workers and the knowledge from the workers and the money from the customers that now gives the business 200 joules. So you started with 100 and you're gonna end up with 200. Now there's yearly returns on this. I'm just, for, for simplistic purposes, you're getting 
out of the process more than what you're putting in. And during the course of this time, you're capturing financial energy from the other systems. So for instance, you have gold that has financial jewel, uh, financial um, jewels that, that, that you pay for it, but it's your labor. Your labor, these people, they go to college or they learn a trade and they bring their unique ability to take these materials in this and, and use them on this equipment that they learned how to, how to how to do and then they turn this stuff into a finished product so the big picture concept here is that financial energy this ends good here this this gold bracelet unlike what steve san angelo was talking about with just physical energy this final product is the entire process and how do you measure this roi and when you start off you're looking at this ROI as potentially, you know, 100% return on, on your investment, and then you evaluate the risk at all these different levels. So that being said is you would not create these gold bracelets if your end result is going to be 50 joules. So it would not be created. So it's a microcosm of our entire economy here. If you create situations where you can make money at the end of it, you're going to be taking, you're going to be unlocking your jewels of energy from a stored uh, financial battery, which I'll get to in the next part here. But uh, I'm just going to leave it off here. This is the big picture concept. In, instead of just pulling gold out of the ground and sticking a brick there and saying it's capturing energy, I wanted to show you that it's a lot more that goes into this for mathematical purposes. So this whole same concept can be true 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, that that mathematical relationship of if you're going to be digging gold, there's so much risk involved. And in order to create this jewelry, you're going to need a 100% return on your investment in order to do it, whether it's 100% or 70%, 120%, whatever it is that that ROI is for that particular good or service, you're going to be doing it you're not going to be doing it for less. Now, one other aspect to this is, well, wait a second. What if you find more efficient ways of doing it? Your processes have changed. You found a better way of doing it. You need to, maybe now you can hire less people to do it. Maybe you can do it with less material. Or maybe your plant, uh, your, your plant uh, costs, uh, they, maybe they half. So maybe over the course of time, your costs decrease and what will happen is your competitors will then charge less for those products. So if you don't charge less, you're going to get run out of business. So you're still going to be doing the same concept. It's still going to be 100% return on investment or whatever your, your, whatever your ROI is. No matter what your cost inputs are, that ROI is still going to be the same. So with that, I'm going to leave that off here. And we'll go into the energy storage class in the next section.